so what's up guys how are you doing this is aj uh back with another video here guys and uh today i just have uh i'm just going to be sharing with you guys some tips uh for those who actually want to travel i know i have some of my audiences here uh, on this youtube channel that are really interested in the in the part of digital nomad kind of lifestyle you know uh traveling you know so if you guys are uh if you some of you guys are here uh you actually know what i'm going to be talking about from the title uh today i'm just going to be talking about 10 ways to save money while traveling so th th these are some of the things that i used to do uh, though i didn't uh, i was not traveling full time uh, but if you are traveling a full time i mean you you're going to need to save lots 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 of money so this is what I'm going to be talking about here. So I'm going to be sharing with you some tips on how you can save money while traveling. So I don't know how many tips are there. One, two, three, four, five, about 11. 11 tips. So they're not 10, 11. So, okay, so uh, you're planning to travel. I mean, uh, you want to go to, maybe let me say you're from, maybe you're from somewhere very far. Maybe you're from Nairobi and you want to go to Mombasa and uh, you want to save money while you're doing that you're not traveling around maybe let's say you are a digital nomad you are a content creator like me you are a youtuber you know you're strolling around creating content and you want to also to save some money so these are tips that are really going to help you on how to do that so the first thing you can do uh if you want to save money uh, is plan your trip early in advance this is something you have to do planning your trip early in advance i mean earlier you know if you want to travel maybe you want to tra travel somewhere you know plan earlier enough so uh, you're planning on how you can get your transport to, to where you're going uh you're you're planning uh, uh, about the activities that you're going to do there the places that you're going to visit plan them early enough you know if you plan them early enough then this this means you'll have a chance uh to do a deeper research on the places you have to visit you know <clears throat> you'll also be able to know what to expect when you get there you know uh, you will know the prices of things uh, that you need you know the prices uh the places entry fees of different parks different museums if you're going to be visiting uh you know uh, the hiking trails you know you have to plan your trip early in advance if you plan your trip early in advance this can help you save money while traveling uh when you when you plan early in advance uh you'll be able to know uh the activities you're going to do maybe let me say we're going to mombasa you know that if i go to mombasa the first thing i want to do i'll visit uh I'll, I'll have to visit uh for jesus you know so this means you'll have to do research how much is the entry fee you know uh to enter there how much uh how much do i need for the transport from where i'll, I'll be staying at maybe my uh, let me say you'll be staying maybe at somewhere maybe let me say bamburi you'll have to get to for jesus how um what will you how much will it cost i mean something like that so when you do something like this uh this actually uh, helps you not to to get ripped off also when you know the prices of things that you uh the prices of uh of what you expect about the price maybe let me say for jesus you know you're supposed to pay maybe uh maybe let me say 500 maybe let me say you you are you are a you are a tourist you know you don't live in kenya maybe so planning early in advance is going to help you uh to actually get things right so that you don't get ripped off so that you don't use so much money when you get there i mean uh because uh you might be going there without having an idea uh, people are going to rip you off that is actually this is something that happens you're going to be ripped off i i, I don't think this is the only thing that happens in it's only not the only thing that doesn't happen only in mombasa kenya but i think it's for the rest of the countries i mean uh when they get tourists i mean uh people who are visiting there for the first time they usually take, try to take advantage of them to get more from them so when you plan your trip you'll you'll do your, your research uh you know you'll do your research early enough on on what you what you expect and how much you're going to spend on there so that you don't get conned you don't get scammed along the way which is really really important it's going to help you a lot uh when uh to save money while traveling so that's another important thinking if you don't plan if you don't plan things it means you don't you won't do research on anything you won't have an idea of what to expect you don't know you won't know how much money to use for your transport uh moving getting around in the places that you want to be and this means you're going to lose so much money on the road so something else 
uh, if you want to save money while traveling, just go to cheaper destination. Yeah, go to cheaper destination. Like maybe you can't compare. Let me say, the amount of money that you maybe use to travel around uh, Mombasa is not the same amount of money you'll use when you're getting around Nairobi. That's for sure. For the same time, uh, this also goes the amount of money that you're going to spend in Nepal. You're not going to use the same amount of money. Uh, it's not the same amount of money that you're going to use when you're traveling around New York City. New York City, maybe say it's an expensive destination. You have to have a lot of money. And that's why most of the digital nomads that are traveling around creating content, they usually go to places that are super, super cheap, super, super expensive. I mean, their currency is their currency value is lower. So if they earn, uh, if they do earn money in dollars, like YouTubers do, like content creators, like writers, the way the way we do, we earn money in dollars. So when we go there, I mean, to a cheaper destination, this means we are going to save money. We are going to lose less money. If maybe you plan that, maybe you budgeted that, I'm going to be staying at a maybe at a villa. Maybe let me say in Bali, Indonesia, I'm going to be staying a villa uh, that that costs maybe maybe fifty USD per night. And at the same same villa, you can't get the same same villa in maybe let me say New York City at the same price a villa at fifty. That fifty is actually less. You know, it's actually less. So this means if you pick a uh, expensive destination, you're going to spend lots of money, and this means you won't be able to save anything. So how can you save when you're spending too much money? You're spending more than you expected. So pick cheaper destination, and this means you have to do your research. This, that's why I told earlier, you, you have to plan. If you plan, you'll definitely have to do a research because you'll have to map out the places you want to visit, the activities you're going to do in different places for you uh, uh, when you're exploring where you're going to stay and uh, what you're going to, are you going to cook when traveling around or maybe are you going to be eating out? These are some of the things when you just plan your trip early enough, <laughs> we'll get you there. So when you plan, you pick cheaper destination, this means you'll be saving money. And that's why I have uh, I came across uh, some of the content, uh, some of travelers, uh, I mean, travel influencers. Um, some, I read someone that uh, is a center traveler on Instagram. Uh, actually said, yeah, he actually spent about $500 per month. I mean, per month in, in Bali, and just budgeting. But you can't... That five hundred dollars in US, yeah, and maybe let me say in Mexico, maybe in, in uh, maybe let me say Switzerland, maybe uh, a, a destination that is a bit expensive. That's you're going only going to spend that maybe on accommodation, maybe for two days, maybe something like that. So guys, if you guys are from there, just leave your comment and tell me how how it is. So if you choose, you pick cheaper destination, maybe say like Sri Lanka, uh, maybe Philippines, maybe you pick Indonesia. Maybe you pick Peru, you go to maybe Colombia, Venezuela, Nicaragua, some, the Latin America. I mean, you're going to spend a less money than when you choose to travel around Europe. So pick cheaper destination if you want to save money while traveling. So something else uh, you can do to save money while traveling is split, uh, is split cost if you, are, if, you are, if you travel with another traveler. Yeah, sometimes maybe you're solo traveling like me. Most of the time, I usually travel alone. Most of the time. Uh... So, but if it comes to a, a, a point whereby you, you are traveling alone and you get to meet someone along the road, you know, ah, you can actually, and you guys uh, have the same goal. You guys, all of you guys are maybe in, in the country. Let me say you're in Kenya. All of you guys want to explore. You guys can choose to split cost on the things that you are, uh, especially on accommodations, especially that. Because uh, when it comes to traveling, I can say accommodation is actually one of the things one of the expenditure that takes lots of money i mean you spend so much money on accommodation so if you can get uh to travel with someone and cut the cost on some of the things on accommodation that is going to be incredible and also when it comes to activities maybe say you want to get safari in kenya you want to travel you want to enjoy maybe masai mara safari that's it it's a little bit expensive if you're on your own you are alone it's going to cost you more but if you're with a friend maybe if they tell you guys that uh the safari is going to cost you guys one thousand one thousand dollars maybe if you're with a friend maybe you can split that five hundred five hundred and you get to have the amazing experience with less money so that's where you get to keep your 500 back inside your pockets means so it means you've had the experience uh with someone else but you have you know what you uh, reduce the cost so this is something you can do. You can also choose in some of the activities that you guys can do in pairs. 
you can share the cost and uh reduce and save money this is another incredible way of saving money so if you're a solo traveler traveling around alone maybe don't be afraid uh, if you, uh, you get to meet uh, other travelers out there don't be afraid say hi to them interact with them if they are actually want they are exploring the same places that you, are, you wanted to explore and you think that you can share a cost when it comes to this destination you have to do that split costs on that on the activities and on on the accommodation this is going to help you great time to save money while traveling so th there's something else yeah cook your meals if you can yeah i used to do this you actually get to save a lot of money i remember when i went to to nairobi i think it was last year 2023 uh december there when i went there the first day uh i decided to went uh, I, w I went to eat out in a hotel i took some chapati with some green uh with some green grams yeah so that cost me chapati one chapati cost uh 20 shillings and the green grams cost 50 shillings so i took how many chapatis about i don't i don't two two so that means 40 shillings plus 50 that's 90 the next day i decided you know what uh since i want to save money let me let me just let me just cook so if you if you actually you're staying in an airbnb and you have the chance to cook don't go and eat out because it will save you a lot of money it will save you a lot of money uh, the next day i went to uh to a shop i bought one kg flour and some eggs and some sukuma uh, and a sukuma wiki which is really really cheap uh i, I was staying around ruiru so back then uh you actually could get sukuma wiki at a five bob kenyan shilling five five kenyan shilling which is super super cheap which is really really different from other places like in eldoret here uh we get to pay uh 10 shillings uh maybe the sukuma wiki kills start from uh, 10 shillings and uh if you maybe you go to kwale i was in kwale for three months doing my attachment sukuma wiki starts at a price of uh let me say 20 shillings i mean so but in nairobi it's five shillings so can you just imagine that you are in an airbnb you have a gas there you have utensils even you have some of the cooking oil you will get inside your airbnb uh you'll have even you ha you'll have coffee you'll have sugar inside your airbnb so which means which makes it really really cheaper so you can you just have to cook your meal uh fill your belly and start exploring that's you save money but if you start eating outside you're going to spend more money so remember uh maybe the second day i i decided to cook I used almost maybe let me say uh if it was much maybe 200 kenyan shillings and if maybe i wanted to eat out with that money i will have spent more than 200 shillings just in a single day i'll have spent more than that eating out so if you are staying in an airbnb or maybe you are staying in a hostel where you're traveling so try to cook try to cook it's going to save you lots 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 of money trust me this is something I realize it's incredible if you can cook just cook yeah especially it's it's really incredible it's really incredible and sometimes if you're traveling solo cooking is one way of you getting yourself you know trying to keep yourself busy you know just trying to push time and uh, make yourself feel uh, and um so that you don't feel lonely so that you have actually have something going you cook your, an amazing meal eat healthy it's a good thing it's a good thing because the meals that you're going to find in some hotels eating out they won't actually really satisfy you enough maybe if you're someone who you know you have a really really different kind of appetite so that is something else you can do uh to save money while traveling so another thing uh is use public transport yeah let me talk about this when i went to nairobi last year uh, i wanted to get to my my airbnb Rem remember i was dropped uh use uh use i uh, took an sgr from there uh from sukimau an another train that took us from sukimau to cbd now when i got that the cbd trying to make my way to ruiru i tried to ask maybe if a border border guy going to take me from where i was uh the cbd of nairobi to ruiru actually <laughs> told me that i uh, uh i had to pay 1000 and a ta taxi it was it was more than that uh, almost 2000 to get from where i was from since the from the cbd uh to the uh to ruiru kimbo because that's where i had booked my my airbnb that's where i planned uh that's where i was going to stay so if you want to save money use public transport 
you use matatus in in Kenya if you come in Kenya make use of the matatus because they are really really cheap you just have to find the right the right spot for where especially in Nairobi you can get lost really uh, you can get lost really easily because of you you might be searching a, uh, for a way maybe to get a matatu that goes maybe let me say goes to Ruiru maybe goes to Githurai goes to Thika you know searching these spots sometimes it can be tricky but don't forget to ask around people are going to help you get a matatu which is going to be way cheaper and remember i, I was I, I was, it was about to pay about 1000 for a border border ride from CBD Nairobi CBD to Ruiru and uh, later on i got a matatu that took me from where i was around nrg plaza just near the archives in nairobi and uh, it took me from there uh from the archives uh to ruiru kimbo i only used uh, uh it was 70 i think 70 70 or 80 back there if it goes the price goes higher in the evenings maybe it's 100 from where from the cbd uh to ruiru kimbo around there so you see from 1000 Kenyan shillings to 100 Kenyan shillings. So, if you want to save money, don't use taxi, private private transports, it's going to cost you more. But uh, sometimes uh, if you are in a situation that forces you to use taxis, maybe uh, you ha you maybe you you came from maybe you travel somewhere and you got there late and you di you did your research and realized that that place is really dangerous at night. Uh, you'll have no choice. You'll have no choice but to dig to get a uh, a private taxi that's going to take you to where you're going because actually your health is more than you is more important than the money than the money you're trying to save so if it's you are in a situation that uh maybe there is a uh, chaos all over the roads i mean something like that the only way you can get through that maybe road is by using a private taxi a uh, private trust transport i mean get a taxi then you have to do that but if there's nothing, you can actually get where you're going by using a matatu or using maybe if you're in Mombasa, a tuk-tuk. You should do that. You should do that because it's going to save you lots of money. So that is another way you can save money while traveling. Another thing is going to, uh, you can ask locals for so the price of things you want to buy. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's the touristic, the touristic prices of things and there's the local price of things. You know, when you go to somewhere... Uh, I've been I've seen this in Mombasa. Uh, tourists are which are uh, charged way more on some things that uh, let me say they are triple the price or they double the price on the things that they want to buy. So when you actually get to interact with the locals, ask them about the prices, especially when it comes to transportation, especially taking a border border ride from one place to another. When you talk to the locals, they're going to uh, tell you uh, on how much money you should spend on certain things, maybe getting a ride from where to where from maybe let me say uh maybe from from where you are let me say naivas in ferry to town it's going to cost you how much maybe if you're getting a ride from you know when you talk to the locals you're going to realize you're going to realize that uh, you're going to know the place uh the price i mean you're going to have the rough estimate of how much money you should spend when you know actually how much money you should spend getting from one place to another it's going to make it easier for you uh, to actually uh, to save money because you won't uh, you won't be overcharged because you actually know the price you know the price so ask locals talk to the locals ask them especially if you want you want to save money but you uh, you want to eat out ask the locals about their you know the prices uh, about the amazing spots uh, where you can get the local cu cuisine I mean the local cuisine at a uh, really friendly friendly and a reasonable price so talk to the locals interact with them ask them where you can uh, how much how much things cost from where to where especially on movement if you want to buy something also do the same this is going to help you save lots of money you so you have to be interactive you have to you have to be social you have to talk to the locals in your public transport you have to say hi to the people you have to interact with them for you to know this but if you want to talk if you want to talk to anyone then it's going to be really hard for you to know actually the right price of the uh, of the things you want to purchase uh, of uh, fare from one place to another and so on and so on that is something uh, you have to know something else I uh, should bargain in the markets you have to bargain especially in most most markets the prices are usually not fixed not fixed especially if you want to buy something a souvenir you can you can bargain on those things you can bargain if someone tells you uh, in if it maybe if you come to Mombasa Kenya 
uh, you went to Kongoya market, which is uh, the largest market in Mombasa. You, you go there, you ask uh, for a bag, maybe for a t-shirt. Let me, let me say something like this, maybe a sweater. And uh, uh, of course you want to buy a sweater. <laughs> you won't buy a sweater in Mombasa because it's too hot. In case maybe, let me say something like that. You want to buy a sweater. Maybe it's raining this time. Rainy season can be a little bit cold. So you maybe you only part the swimming design, you know. Uh, the summer vibes so you want to buy so if someone tells you uh, something is maybe cost 1000 kenyan shilling that means you can get that at maybe 600 kenyan shillings so which is about 400 off you are going to save 400 400 kenyan shillings more so you need to do that you need to actually bargain you know don't just buy something if someone tells you it's 500 don't just give them 500 you have to bargain you know someone tells you it's 500 tell them you know what i only have 300 your stuff from there uh if maybe yeah just begin 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 things that's one, one one way of saving money don't just uh pay money or uh, on things but but maybe if you want to tip someone uh for their good services then you can just tell them you know you know what yeah you can just keep the change so begin 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 man if you want to save money on anything you want to buy especially in the streets because things are usually not on there are usually not on the fixed price if you're a tourist and people actually see you people know that you're a tourist you need to begin because uh the price that are going to be selling you things they are going to selling they're going to sell you things at a, a touristic price so the good way you have to begin so if someone tells you 1500 tell them you know what i have 5000 ah i have 1000 i mean something like that that's why one way of saving money while traveling Another thing is to travel during low seasons, especially like uh, maybe in January, February, March, uh, April. Um, these these are low seasons in in Mombasa, in Mombasa, in Kenya. I mean, uh, this is when actually things are really really slow, and not so many people visit visit uh, come visit these places. I mean, so I told you earlier, you have to plan. If you have to plan, you have to do your research. So it means you have to travel during the low seasons uh, if you want to save more money because things usually are cheaper accommodation are cheaper transport are cheaper are, are cheaper activities are really really low and also you don't get to uh to get yourself in crowds in so in so big crowds of people i mean especially if you go to mombasa during october november december things are usually extremely expensive that is what what you have to know what you have to know so but if you travel like uh, uh, during low season everything just goes down everything is just cheaper accommodation you can get an accommodation for starting from 10 usd which is really really incredible uh, another thing if you're traveling is, is to spend money your money wisely so this comes to how you spend your money if you spend money recklessly buying things that you actually don't need you're going to waste you are going to waste so much money on the road so you just have, just have to spend your money wisely this means you only buy what you need you don't buy what you want you buy only what you need you buy the essential things the only things that are necessary for your survival you know uh that's going to help you from one point to another don't spend too much money on uh, on accommodation uh on a on a on a stay whereby you can get, don't spend about uh maybe say 100 usd where whereby you can get a, uh, someone to stay with only 30 usd so do that spend your money wisely don't buy anything that you don't need and uh, actually uh don't buy souvenirs <laughs> yeah i mean if you have to only if you need to but uh if but if don't buy don't just buy anything because you just you're just uh looking at it and it uh, impresses you and you are trying to save money you're going to waste so much money so try to buy things the only things that you need if you want to save money and this is the only way that you're going to to ensure that the budget that you planned earlier the budget draft that you had um is actually going to work out it's actually going to it's going to hold i mean so if you're you budgeted about uh, maybe 1000 usd and you start buying things on the way things that you actually don't need recklessly you spend money just uh, without even following your plan you know i told you earlier guys that he, if you have a plan you actually only do things that you plan to do but if you don't have a plan means you'll be going out of your budget means you're going to spend more money than actually you 
you anticipated so don't spend money wisely just have some rules on how you spend money buy only what you need but not what you want something that is really really essential okay something else that you can do to spend money while you have to save money save money while traveling is stay in affordable places yeah like airbnbs and hostels you know don't stay in villas if you don't have enough money to pay for the villas if you want to save money don't stay in big hotels i mean stay in airbnbs stay in hostels and if you really 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 want to save so much money then you can do coach surfing you know people can host you if you have friends somewhere they can host you i mean something like that when i went to malindi uh my friend uh, actually if you guys know uh yeah, my friend friend of mine wanted to host to host me, but I didn't. Uh, I was not too comfortable with that. But if you travel to places and you, you feel comfortable with people hosting you, uh, you 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 can actually do coach surfing. Just do that. If you can get an Airbnb and you can stay in hostels, uh, staying in hostels it's amazing because you get to meet some friends. You get to you get to have a bigger space if you want to work also. That's which is incredible. So yeah, so stay in cheap places also check on the prices of things just check for the best deals on the booking.com on airbnb you know on expedia if maybe you're going to use that on trip advisor check the best deals if you're going to book any hotels or airbnb to just save money on that and another thing is actually uh, to save money is acknowledge your financial status reality you have to know you have to know you know, uh, you know that your account in my account. Let me say I have maybe five hundred USD, and I want to I want to plan that to travel for the last uh, for the for about one month in Kenya, moving from county to county, just exploring. You have to make sure you know your know your know your reality. You know know your financial status. I mean, just acknowledge your reality. You know, man. You know, I'm a broke traveler just acknowledge that i'm a broke traveler so i have to save money i don't make enough money online maybe i don't make enough money out of the content that i'm creating so i have to save money so i have to be frugal i have to be extremely frugal to for me to be able to save enough money that i do need to be able that you when end up more that will enable me to get from one place to another so guys these are just 11 amazing tips on how to save money while traveling so guys I thought I should share with you guys. If some of you guys are planning to travel, uh, make make use of these tips. And uh, uh, very very soon, I'm going to be also publishing the same same thing I just talked about here on my website on my travel website. So, good willing, I'm going to be starting the website really really soon. So, this is just a draft of an article that I I wrote. A draft of an article of I wrote, and uh, I decided to, let me just to keep uh, the channel active. Let me just share with you guys what's going on. So, guys, uh, thank you so much for those who've been watching here. So, if you this uh, the tips I've been sharing with you here are amazing, uh, don't fail to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and that's how you support me, guys, to keep on working out uh, on this YouTube channel, keep on making money online, and uh, be able to travel full time, inshallah. So, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you get to save lots of money while traveling. If you guys, you if you guys are using any hack out there um, to save you more money while traveling, just leave leave your comment in the comment section. And uh, thank you so much, guys. I uh, love you all, and see you in my next one. Peace.